Good morning, everybody. It's bright and early today. Mm. Hope you're having a fantastic morning. You can see the sun is rising in the background. It's dark in the morning. <laughs> so, I have the last harvest coming up. The seasons are changing. It's cold. It's getting cold at least. Colder. Um, all of our gardens were reaching the last harvest. So today I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about the last harvest and the energy and all of that stuff. I have also some exciting news. So we have all of these digital downloads that you can put in your book of shadows and you can get those on the peacockpages.com. But more excitingly, we just finished our celestial wheel book and it has all of these plus a little more, <coughs> excuse me, and all in one book for all of the holidays. Uh, and it's also a journal. So there are journal pages in there so that you can include your own and make it your own book of shadows. Um, those are available on Amazon. I will try to get the link in the video comments um, so that you guys can check that out. It's really awesome. I also have the introspection book that hopefully is approved. Um, and available for purchase so that as we go through the dark part of the year and we start our introspective journey you have a journal that can help you go through there um, I'll be going over all of the questions so I'll be making a video every day from Samhain to Yule and we'll talk about each of the questions as we go through that dark introspective time of the year just to do some self-analyzing and better understanding dig a little deeper into who you are and who you want to be and if those two things kind of line up and how to get there. So that'll be a very fun, exciting, dark time of the year. Um, and so both of those books are now available, which is really exciting. Um, also just one last announcement before we get into the rest of the stuff. This weekend is Denver Pagan Pride. And if you're in the Denver area or Colorado area, or if you're willing to make the drive, come out and see us. It'll be on Samhain. Um, so that'll be really exciting. It'll be all day in Washington Park and come out and see us. It'll be really exciting. We would love, I would love to see all of you people. Uh, so let's get back to the last harvest. Um, the last harvest is a really big holiday for most pagans. This is the end of the year. It is um, our celebration of the end. Um, and the, we wouldn't have a new beginning if we didn't have the end and the cycle wouldn't start and we wouldn't go through these changes with the year's energy if we didn't honor this and we have to honor the end um, so this is a time when we honor our ancestors and we honor all of the things that we've done and we harvest all of that energy and we kind of store it up so that way we have it so that we're ready for all of the things that come next year in paganism it's not like in Christianity or uh, in our normal thought I guess not normal in our socially normed view the end you know like when we celebrate new year's eve on the december 31st the next day is the new year so it's like bam right away we have this new thing but in paganism it's not the same when we have an ending we have to take that time for the end to end and we have to have that nothingness the void we have to honor that time everything came out of the void and that's a thing to honor that darkness that I like to think of it as the womb of the mother goddess and as we end this year and in this cycle we enter into that womb and this is a time to really honor yourself and honor all of the things that you have and the things that you've accomplished and honor the thing the accomplishments of those who came before us um so i don't want to be in this video too long we gotta get ready for school soon uh let's see okay so not only do we have the end of this season, but because we're in this transition time, the veil is really thin. So you might notice you're having more prophetic dreams, you're having, um, you know, visions, you're having, you're seeing ghosts, spirits, fairies, elves, gnomes, all of those different things. We're going to see them. They're going to make themselves present. The fairies and elves and stuff are looking for warm places to come inside. So they're looking for their familiars. They are coming home, in an essence, to your home. Uh, so I like to leave out offerings for them. I like to let them know that they're welcome in my home and that they can come and hang out um, and that we appreciate the help that they do for us. 
And uh, it's also a great time to do psychic, you know, psychic readings, talking to the dead, um, seances. My neighbors are leaving for work. <laughs> it's really early. It's like 6 o'clock. Anyways. Um, and so this is a great time for doing psychic work, any kind of divination. If you're looking to find out what's going to happen in the future or if you need to dive deeper into something that already happened and you need more information, this is a great time to ask the energies for that in that information. Um, the magic right now is really one of the strongest times of the year to do magic. The only other really strong time is Beltane. So if you're on Australia or the Southern Hemisphere, that's what's happening right now. Um, is that we're in this heightened energy time. And... Uh, it's just the energy is really potent. And so all of your magic is going to be really strong. Um, clearing out obstacles, making change, doing mirror spells, casting protection, inner work, um, uncrossing or removing hexes, looking for inspiration, uh, manifestation, transformation, creative visualization, all of these kind of things right now. Using your visualization and your intention to really manifest something. And... Like that. Call it to an end. Do that magic. Make it happen. Um, and really any magic that you do under this time is really potent. Uh, I really... I feel like our ancestors would have come to this time and they'd be like, Okay, we're going to celebrate everything. We're going to have a big kick-ass party. We're going to do our thing because there is so much energy and we want to encourage that energy. So we can keep that energy through winter. And so they would have done a lot of celebrating. There would have been a lot of spell work going on. There would have been a lot of like, let's do this for next year. Let's do this for last year. Let's just, let's do this. Let's get out and take action and, and take those last actions. Um, one of my favorite traditions is uh, at this is the night when you would tell everybody what your problems were. You would say, I'm mad at you for this. This is what you did to me, and I can't believe it. Whatever it is, you just tell them and you get it off your chest, and then tomorrow, or well, on November 1st, when you get up, it's done, and there is no more. There's no, it's done. You just let it go. Um, and in Peru, they have a great festival that they do where everybody comes out and literally kicks the shit out of each other. Literally. Like kicking is a big part of the, the process but they come out and they line up in a big field and everybody comes out and say I'm mad at you we're gonna fight the women fight the men fight the kids fight everybody fights they just come out and they fight each other and they get it all out and at the end of the festival they hug they party they hang out and they're done and they don't bring those transgressions into the next year they don't bring that anger with them forward um, you see this, there is an Irish tradition that is the same where you would sit down at dinner and you would toast them and say, I am so mad at you right now. I toast to you to tell you what a jerk you are. <laughs> and then they'd get it out of the way and they'd be done and they'd be able to move through. If you think about it, winter would have been a time when we were all huddled into our houses together with these people who you were mad at. And you had to get that out of the way before you got into these times where you were literally stuck inside with them for months. So... This is a great time to do that. If you have something you want to get off your chest, you want to let it go, let it go. Write it down. Send a letter. Even if you don't give the letter to them, that's fine. You let that energy go. You don't need the other person to verify that they received your complaint or that they heard you or that they're going to make a change. Any of that. That's not healing. Healing comes from within. So you have to let it go. You have to just say, you know what? You offended me. And that's how I felt about it, and I don't want it to happen again, so we're going to move forward. And period. That's it. Um, if you have someone that you want to have a big heart-to-heart -heart with, and you want to, like, hash things out, and this is a great time to do that. Just get it out. Let it out. Just let it go. Let it go. Okay, sorry. We watched Frozen the other day. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about some other traditions um, from around the world. Uh, we have our dumb dinner, which I have tried to do many, many times, and it never works out. We always end up giggling, but many traditions center around the notion that you have a silent dinner. You put places at the table for those who have died, and you sit down and have dinner, and you do it silently. 
um, in part to honor those who cannot speak and also to listen in case they want to speak while you're having dinner. You've invited them to your home, you've done the deal, you've light the candles, you've, you know, oh, here's a fun little thing, uh, putting apples under the trees for the dead so that they can find their way home or have a snack as they're going along. So if you do these things and then they come to your home and you sit down with them with dinner, you have a dumb dinner. It's called dumb, not like stupid, but dumb, like silent. And you sit in silence and eat dinner. Um, every time we've ever tried, it always ends up with people giggling and laughing and it's fun. It's not a somber, like when you think about it from the beginning, like, oh, this is gonna be such a somber, like, oh, I'm gonna sit here and die. And it always ends up with giggling. There's always laughter. It always ends up to be this fun experience. And we're always like, dang it, we didn't make it this year. But that's okay. <laughs> In part, I feel like that is our ancestors and our friends and our community that we're welcoming coming and saying it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to laugh and have a good time. They want you to honor their lives, not be sad that they're not with you anymore. And so that's one of the big differences from the view of death in paganism versus monotheistic religions is it's not the final end. We honor their lives. We honor all of the great things that they did. We tell stories of who they were and what they did and honor their accomplishments and not mourn their loss. Like, because we know that when they die, they are reborn. Their energy is transformed and they are reborn out into the, the world as a new energy, into something new. And that's a beautiful thing. That is the cycle of life and that's what we're doing. And so death is not this horrible end all, you're going to hell. That's not how that works. Although I love the early translations of the Bible where hell literally translates to underground. And so they buried everybody underground. Anyways. <laughs> All right, so another tradition that is debated on when it started. Many people say it started in the medieval time. There's some evidence that says it started earlier. Um, I take history written by monks with a grain of salt, and therefore it's hard to determine when certain traditions started. You know that they carried on because they continued on until, you know, now. Um, but anyways, so mumming was um, where you would dress up and you would go around and you would go door to door and you would sing songs and poems and jokes and tell lyric limericks and other things to people and they would give you treats. So it was kind of like trick-or-treating except for instead of just saying trick-or-treat, you would put on a little show at their door. Um, and it was just a great time to get out and celebrate. Um, there was also pranking done during this time. Uh, people would paint their faces white with ashes and they would run around and scare you and jump out of it ah! and do a lot of pranking. Uh, because again, we are honoring the good. We are honoring the positive. We're honoring their life. And so if you had someone who was a jokester in your family, you would honor them by playing jokes. You would do things like that and not, not dwell in the silence of sadness, but move forward in the positive and knowing that new life was will be created not only from their soul being reborn into a new body but also from their body being gifted back to the earth and transforming physically back into the earth and so this is a beautiful process of transformation and regrowth and something new but we have to have something dead we have to end to begin so that's really we're really celebrating that um Let's see, divination, um, throwing nuts or eggs into the fire or uh, the egg, where you put the egg in the cup. And um, now tradition, now the spell is you put the cup under your bed, um, but you would have held it next to the fire or carried it with you or whatever, and then you would have read the divination from that. I don't do egg divination, so you'd have to check out somebody who does um there are some great YouTubers, some root workers who do a lot of that kind of magic. So check them out. They're awesome. Um, obviously, in Mexico, they celebrate Los Dias de Muertes, which comes all the way back from um, before Santa La Muerta. Um, and it was the goddess of death in Aztec religion and Mayan culture. Um, both had... 
side note, one of the reasons that Christianity came over so well into Mayan and Aztec cultures is because they had this worshiping of blood. And Jesus sacrificed himself and bled out on the cross. And his blood is honored. And so this is a really easy thing for them to bring over because they really honored the life force of blood. And they didn't see it as this like, oh, vampiric, whatever. It was a beautiful life-giving energy. This is what they, you know, they honored that. And so when Christianity came over, they saw Jesus and his sacrifice of himself and had given his body to the people. And that really resonated with their own culture. And therefore, it made it easy for them to adapt that. Now, that culture before that practiced this honoring of the dead now in Los Dias de Muertes. And... Again, it wasn't a scary time. I know that we tried now to make it about evil, whatever. But this was about honoring your ancestors. This is about welcoming. I love that movie Coco. If you've never seen it, it's amazing. It very much represents the whole ideology behind the holiday. And honoring your dead and welcoming them back. Um, and it makes me laugh because my neighbors, um, right around this year, you know, you start to feel their grandpa who passed a couple years back. But he just hangs out and waits for them to welcome him into the house. Even though I imagine he could go in there all by himself. The honor and the nostalgia of it. You know, this is how he lived in his life. And so in death, he feels like he has to be honored that way before he can be brought in. But he'll hang out outside. And I'll feel his presence in the backyard. And then when the grandma, she does her thing right around Halloween. And he'll go inside and he'll spend time with her. And... It's just one of those interesting energies to be present. And you really are going to feel this all over the place right now. And so it's just that time to honor those that we've lost. And I feel like I'm talking in circles and I keep coming back to that same thing. But that's what all of the energy is. All around the world, All you know, this is how they celebrated it. Um... We have in the Norse calendar um, on November 7th, we have Alfblot, which is the Feast of the Dead. This is awesome. Many modern practitioners will celebrate this on the full moon right after Samhain. So it'll be the next full moon, not necessarily November 7th. Um, but it'll be the, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the Feast to Honor the Dead and the Elves, and it is held at your home with your family and it's not necessarily a like big party but just like a great dinner to come together um, and honor the elves and your ancestors and ask for fertility in the next year um, it was always put on by the lady of the house and um, it was a private affair this is a time when you privately honored your family so again this is one we don't have a lot of like written proof because they didn't want to talk about it especially once Christianity started taking rise um, so then just a couple more things about the symbols of this holiday. The sun's starting to rise, and it's made the light in my camera really weird. <laughs> I feel very yellow. <laughs> like, there's a yellow. Ooh, it is super yellow. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Anyways, all right. Uh, so symbols of this holiday, obviously it's the final harvest, so this is when we honor the death and the darkness. Apples hold a really strong connection because apples are a food that we give to the dead. Sorry, I have to pause this. Never mind. I thought it was going to be bright enough to turn off the light, but it's not. It's still too dark. Anyways, okay, so... Um, apples are really important because they're food that we give to the dead. Um, it's something that you can leave out as an offering. There were different traditions, like you would peel the apple and throw it over your shoulder and it would make the letter of the person you were going to love or marry. Um, <clears throat> and um, bobbing for apples is another one that's a fun game. I love doing it with the kids because it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> we have the jack-o'-lantern, which is a modern myth in comparison. Uh, to the ancient tradition of carving turnips. They didn't have pumpkins in Europe. They had turnips and other kind of gourds. But they would have carved turnips. It is hard <laughs> to carve a turnip. I don't know if you've ever tried. I would definitely recommend it just as something fun to do. But it's definitely harder than carving a pumpkin. So, <laughs> but the story of 
there is a story of Stringy Jack that comes with the pumpkin. Um, the jack-o'-lantern actually started out as a turnip. According to the story, Stringy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. True to his name, Stringy Jack did not want to pay... Stingy, not Stringy. <laughs> Stingy Jack did not want to pay for his drink, so he convinced the devil to turn him into a coin that Jack could use to pay for his drink. And the devil did this. He says, I can turn myself into money, no problem. And he did. And so Jack paid and left. <laughs> well, this made the devil mad. And, um... He came, the devil came and told Jack that I'm really mad at you and that when you die, um, he was not going to claim his soul. And he says, you know what? That's fine. You want to play tricks on me and I'm not going to claim your soul and God doesn't want you either. So, uh, the next year Jack again tried to trick the devil and he climbed into a tree. Um, and then when he was up into the tree, He called to God to say, come and save me. But God did not come and save him. Um, and so after Jack died, he didn't go to heaven. And he didn't go to hell. And he was stuck walking the earth in purgatory. And so they paint that this is a Christian whatever. And so they paint the, or they carve the jack-o'-lantern. And they put the coal in it to keep him away. Um, and to keep the devil away. Because the devil doesn't want to be with somebody who played tricks on them. Um, so <laughs> it's just a funny take on this modern, like a modern take on this. And by modern, I mean created by Christianity and not in any way connected to the original reason they carved turnips. Turnips are a plant that comes out of the ground. Um, they carry with them a lot of energy. And also, like eating wise, it would have been something great to have through the winter because they would have stored really well. So this was a, a, a root plant that was honored and, and cherished. And so they honored that by carving it into little faces and putting it out to scare away the energies that they didn't want to come. Um, you can also, I like to do a little modern twist on this. Instead of using your pumpkins to deter things you don't want, I also use my pumpkins to encourage things I do want. So, you know, if you have an ancestor who loved cats, you do a cat. If you loved, you know, you could write people's names in it and all of those different things. Um, more modern-wise, if you look at pumpkins in themselves and not related to the jack-o'-lantern story, pumpkins carry with them this amazing ability to grant wishes. And so another great tradition at this time is to carve out your pumpkin and everybody puts their wishes in and then you light the candle and you let it burn all night and in the morning you bury your pumpkin with the wishes that may or may not have burned and your wishes will come true. Um, so pumpkins are really great at that. Pumpkins are also a communicative. So they help to transfer energy from one place to another. So you can use them as like a go-between and you can leave notes for your debt the dead in them or the spirits that you want to talk to um and then finally this night is also often referred to as the witch's new year and the night in which we would go out and celebrate there are a lot of stories that people tell about the witches riding off into the night on their brooms and partying and having their big whatever um i love one of the traditions where witches used to rub their broomsticks with a magical goop and this magical goop was had hallucinogenic properties. It had belladonnas and some other slightly toxic herbs in it. But then they would ride their brooms that had been rubbed thoroughly in this. And then they would hallucinate. Uh, <laughs> again, you don't know how much of these things to take. You have to take them with a grain of salt because you don't know how real it is. But I do imagine that there was something of that where they would take... Um, prophetic herbs and oils and things of that nature and have ecstasy dances where they really got in touch with that energy and it wasn't a, an evil dance with demons kind of thing like the Christians like to say it was but it was a beautiful time to honor and celebrate and have a great party and hang out with the people that you have been missing and honor them and honor their lives and honor your life and really live it up and honor your life like that's a big thing like we talk a lot about death but in celebrating that death we are honoring the life that came before that so 
I hope that everybody has a phenomenal Samhain or last harvest or Halloween or whatever you call it. Um, don't forget to check out our new books in the digital downloads. Come down and see us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.